struck, the investigation into possible Trump-Russian collusion in the 2016 election has resulted in 23 indictments, correct? Uh, I don't know the number, but it's sizable. It's resulted in 18 individuals uh, who have been indicted, true? Uh, again, I don't know the numbers, but I'll... Three corporate entities have been indicted in connection with the Trump Russian collusion investigation, correct? Uh, I'll accept your representation. I don't know. Uh, the investigation has identified at least 75 different criminal acts, correct? Uh, again, sir, I haven't tallied them up. Uh, there have been five guilty pleas, true? Uh, I believe that's correct, sir, but I'm not certain. Trump's campaign manager, Paul Manafort, has been charged with conspiracy to defraud the United States of America, correct? Uh, he's been charged. I don't know the specific uh, crimes. He's sitting in jail right now as a result of alleged witness tampering, correct? Yes, sir. Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, has pled guilty to lying to the FBI, correct? Yes, sir. Trump's deputy campaign manager, Rick Gates, has been indicted for conspiracy to defraud the United States, correct? Uh, sir, he's been indicted. I don't know the charges. George Papandopoulos, a former Trump campaign national security advisor, has pled guilty to lying to federal investigators about his contacts with Russian spies during the campaign. True? Uh, certainly with Russians. I, I don't know how to characterize those Russians. Okay. Now, the FBI publicly disclosed information about the Hillary Clinton email investigation 11 days prior to the election in 2016. True? Uh, yes, sir. I believe that's right. But the FBI maintained confidentiality about the Trump-Russia criminal investigation during the entire duration of the Trump presidential campaign, correct? Yes, sir. So if you really wanted to stop Donald Trump from becoming president, you could have revealed the criminal investigation into the Trump campaign to the American people prior to the election, true? Yes, sir. Mr. Strzok, you know, you are before this committee for one reason, to serve as a monumental distraction. There is a criminal investigation into the Trump campaign and possible crimes related to the 2016 presidential election involving collusion with Russian spies to sell out our democracy and hijack the presidency. My colleagues in the cover-up caucus don't like that criminal investigation, and therefore, they need to identify a villain. Mr. Strzok, tag, you're it. Here's what's so ironic about that characterization. Vladimir Putin is a thug and a dictator who hijacked and interfered and attacked our democracy. But apparently, he doesn't meet the Republican villain test. Our so-called commander-in-chief continues to play footsie with him. Kim Jong-un murders his people and has threatened nuclear annihilation against American cities. But apparently, he doesn't meet the Republican villain test. The administration continues to engage in fake negotiations with him. David Duke and neo-Nazis, apparently for some, don't meet the Republican villain test. Oh, that's right. I forgot. There are fine people on both sides. Roy Moore, an alleged serial pedophile, apparently doesn't meet the Republican villain test. He was the nominee of your party for a seat in the United States Senate. But we're supposed to believe that Agent Peter Strzok, a former Army officer who has served the FBI with distinction, yes, made some mistakes, is the gravest existential threat to our democracy. How dare you lecture us about villains when your party continues to turn a blind eye to that parade of degenerates that I just listed. This investigation is a joke. It's a fraud. This hearing is a kangaroo court. It is a three-ring circus. It is not even meritorious of an investigation by Ace Ventura pet detective, let alone 75 
members of the United States Congress. Let's stop wasting taxpayer dollars and get back to the business of the American people.